Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome into another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI. As always, we appreciate our good friends at Titan MRI, and we come to you from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. And of course, we'll have Coach Spurrier on today, and he is sponsored by Meldon Law. So it's uh, great to have them on as a double sponsor. And uh, we all, always enjoy being here at Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. Uh, Coach Spurrier, today on Friday, we'll have Alyssa Lang from the SEC Network. She'll join us. And then uh, we're not going to have a show on the day after Christmas uh, for a number of reasons. You can imagine what some of them are. Then we'll be back the following Friday with a brand new show. Uh, let's get right to the hand law starting lineup. And as you know, the starting lineup, as always, is presented by hand law. Chris Han and I had an interesting exchange this week. He's he's still all in on on Billy Napier, and I think a lot of people should be. But we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, Hand Law is a Florida law firm which helps clients with the government. You can learn more about Hand Law by visiting its website at www.hand.law. The firm is available for consultation in Jacksonville. And yeah, Chris uh, is, is, and I think a lot of us are still like we're we're not ready to pull the plug one year in to a coach. Uh, but number one on the Hand Law starting lineup was uh, what Billy Napier told us last year when he said, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Well, now we know what worse feels like because this is pretty bad. This is three straight losses at the end of the season, which is very McElwain-ish, which I I mentioned in one of my stories that I wrote this weekend. Um, That's what used to happen to him. They would go in, they would play well, they'd win, they'd find a way to win games, and they'd lose a bunch of games at the end. They'd always lose to FSU, you know, um, lo- would lose that SEC championship game and and lose the bowl game, and they would end up with, with you know, like a deflated feeling. That's what this one felt like. Um, so it is worse. You lost to all three of your rivals this year. Uh, the, we, you all know all the stats about what why this was a bad year. Six and seven. Which means they had the second losing for the the last time they had the most back to back losing seasons. I'll try to get this right. Back to back losing seasons was seventy eight and seventy nine. Seventy eight was Doug Dickey four and seven. Seventy nine was 0-10 and one. The, the infamous year, the lovable losers we might call them now. These aren't lovable losers. Nobody feels that way about where Florida football is right now. The last time before that. Before that 78-79 debacle, and there's a long story that that goes into that one day, I'm sure. I'm sure on Pat Dooley's story time, I will get to to that. Um, But the last time that happened, I think it was 1947 before that, where they went back-to-back losing seasons. So this is rare air that Florida is in. And again, I, I keep going back to the same thing. You can't blame Billy Napier for all of it. You can't blame Billy Napier for their record in SEC games over the last 19 games or whatever it is. I can't remember what it is now. Uh, We can't blame him for everything, but you can blame him for this year. And he doesn't get all the blame. Dan Mullen gets some of it. Scott Strickland gets some of it. Scott Strickland chose to make a move and put Florida in a rebuilding position again. Now, I'm not saying he was wrong. I'm just saying he, he deserves some of the blame. A lot of people that deserve blame. Players deserve blame, certainly. But the bottom line is, it went six and seven. Think about how you felt after the South Carolina game. I mean, again, you just beat South Carolina, which was no big whoop at the time. Now you look back on it, you go, holy cow, how did we do that? You were six and four. You had a chance to go eight and four. You felt like the next two games were winnable. You had a chance to go to a, a better bowl game. This was not the one you wanted to go to, believe me. Um, and uh, I mean, Florida's first choice was the Outback Bowl. That's where they wanted to go. Uh, but but the and and you felt like recruiting was going well. Now you're sitting here and you're going, what is going on with recruiting? Why is Miami beating us for every player? And uh, we're six and seven, just like they were last year. So the Gator ba- fan base is not in good shape right now. It's not in a very good mood. Uh, number two on uh, hand law starting lineup, obviously, uh, just to talk a little bit about the game, Jack Miller is not the answer. Uh, but I, again, is that 
fair to him? Not no. Uh, but I I just look, I watched them in the spring game and I went, they need Anthony Richardson to stay healthy. And, and I don't think they called great plays for him in the spring game. This game they called awful plays for him. I thought the play calling was terrible in this game. But again, everybody says, well, you know, you had all this time to work with him. Well, not that much time. You found out who you were going to play less than two weeks before the game, and you had probably no tape on them, not thinking you were going to play in the Vegas Bowl against Oregon State, uh, wh- whatever. But that's not even the point. Jack Miller went weeks without being able to throw a football, weeks and weeks, and finally was able to throw a football three weeks ago and then had still not taken a snap of competitive football uh, in a game that mattered. And now he was put in that situation. There was a point there where he – had that little run there in the first quarter where they looked pretty good. And they, and they were able to get down there, miss the field goal, got down there, went for went for fourth down. And I, I tell you what, um, Billy Napier and I need to have a discussion about his fourth down play calls. They're terrible, just terrible. Uh, he's He's got – there's no imagination. And, again, I get – like there are a lot of things I go, well, I understand because you've got a quarterback who's got a kind of – catch up and everything. You, nobody expected. I mean, people probably expected Richardson to to opt out, but they didn't expect this thing with Kitten to happen. And now you're down to a guy who's not practiced or played. Um, so I get a little bit of that, but you could have been more creative than what you were. And it was, it was a very vanilla game plan, especially down 30 to three. Um, look, I said this before and I'll say it again. Oregon State's got a very good football team this year. Now, over the history of time, no, they have not had a good program. This was their third 10-win season. But don't forget, they came to this game ranked 14th in the country. Florida was not receiving votes. There was a reason. They have a good team. They have a lot of older players. They have some good – even in this game, their freshman running back, who's been their star all year, got knocked out early. Didn't matter. They did the dumb thing of – letting their senior quarterback play a couple of series because he'd earned it. And in a game where I'm sitting there going, good, leave him in. Hopefully you leave him in forever because he's clearly not as good as the other guy. Um, But the bottom line is they were better. They're, they're a better team. And to be honest, they have a better roster. Oh, I, I got, I, I had to turn off Herb Street and McAfee, especially because Herc, Herb Street kept talking about, well, Florida's got all the talent. The, the Gators have all this great talent. I'm like, where? Where? I'm not seeing it. I see a, some guys that are good players. I don't see elite talent anywhere. The only guy with elite talent might have been Anthony Richardson. And, of course, when you had him in a game, you had a chance to win every game. For the first time all year, they didn't have a chance to win the game in the fourth quarter. First time all year. And guess who wasn't playing? He was elite talent, but he wasn't an elite quarterback. So I, I just don't think Florida is that talented. But I but that doesn't mean I, do, I pull all the blame away from the coaches. You guys didn't get them ready to play, and that's number three on um, – on uh, the hand loss starting lineup. We need to coach better. I keep hearing from Billy Napier has become his catchphrase. And uh, I just don't want to hear it anymore. I'm tired of hearing it. Okay. Yeah, you do. Well, why? we'll start now. How about starting right now? Why wait till tomorrow or the next day? They need to coach better, but I think that's basically a catchphrase that coaches use to say, we, we don't have the players, but I'm not going to throw them under the bus. We need to coach better. So um, he does, though. It is it is getting old, though. And now Florida, 24 and 24 in bowl games all time, which is um, back to 500. Lost three in a row. And that is the bottom line. When you lose three straight bowl games, that is just brutal. I mean, that is just uh, tough. And you have to, uh, you know, you have to get better at it. Uh, so... You know, yeah, he's got to coach better. He's got to reevaluate. To me, the second or the second season. I don't know what season he numbers it as, but to me, there's a football season, and then there's a second season, which is between football, you know, and uh, and fit, and getting your uh, 
roster, and then you go to spring football. Um, so the second season is he's got to have great player acquisition. So far, it's not looking good, but who knows? Things can change. We'll see what happens. He's got to get a good quarterback in here. He's got to get a uh, 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 some defensive tackles. He's got to get some linebackers. I mean, he's got to get a lot of players in here and continue to recruit well. It's a tough job. Look, I'm not saying you should be getting paid $7 million to do this job. I'm just saying it's not as easy as you think it is. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Um, but he's got to do a better job. Uh, number four, I told my wife this uh, on Sunday at one point. I walked out and I said, Karen, no matter how bad the Gators are, they can't take football away from me. It's just – it's still – everything I wanted to be. And that was because of what happened in the NFL. In fact, I turned the Florida game, the sound off in the Florida game to watch the Vikings win, um, which was unbelievable. Then I, I watched on Sunday and we saw these incredible games, um, whether it was the uh, Jaguars coming back. I actually was rooting for the Jaguars. And you know me, I'm not a big Jags guy. Maybe I'm becoming one. I like Trevor Lawrence a lot. Uh, the snow game in Buffalo, the Raiders' unbelievable win, the Bucks' schizophrenic appearance. Every game but one, I think, ended up being within 10 points uh, on, on a football Saturday, Sunday. It was unbelievable. And it's just, it, it gets me hyped up. And it, it kind of made me go, Pat, it's not the game you have a problem with. It's this team that you cover. And they do. I have a, do have a problem with them. And finally, number five, women's basketball with another win, 79 55 over UNC Greensboro. Florida led 16 to 1 after one quarter. That's quite a hole you've dug there. Um, but the Gators have not played anybody, as we all know. We've talked about this before. Um, they are 80th in the net rankings right now. Now they're they're going to get a million. They they can go zero oh, and whatever the uh, in the SEC schedule and still actually move up. They won't, but I mean they've got to win some games and some big games. But they haven't had a lot of opportunities to win big games. They that's the way they scheduled, and I, I'm curious why they schedule so soft. But the bottom line is they're eleven and one, and uh, they now they have a game that's against a team that does have a. Uh, it, 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 it'll be good for their net ranking because it's a neutral site game and it's on Tuesday, of course, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, later um, against uh, Oklahoma. And Oklahoma is right on the verge of being a quad one win, but it would definitely be a quad two. So it's a big game for them. And we'll also talk about the men as well a little bit later on the show. Right now, we got to take a break. When we come back, the HBC will join us. We always love our time with him. We'll talk to him about... The disaster in Las Vegas. Vulgar in Vegas, I called it. That wasn't a good headline, though. We'll be right back with more on another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another duly noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer, to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept you know being able to get the barbecue uh now we have this new online ordering so we before it was a call ahead carry out quick service um we have like a curbside kind of a deal where um you know you're, you're everything's ready to go for you um and then we thought wow we have a really great dine-in concept but uh how can we make this you know streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town adam's rib code to go come on down and enjoy it Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years, check out Ballyhoo Grill on Facebook or at BallyhooGrill.com. 
Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. Pat Dooley Storytime is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. Nobody knows how to provide pediatric health care for little gators better than Dr. Mike and the other board certified pediatricians and the pediatric nurse practitioners of East Lake Pediatrics. They have been providing personalized health care to the children of Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties since 2004. And with the recent addition of Dr. Chris, who is also board certified in sports medicine, they are now offering care for youth sports injuries as well. To learn more about East Lake Pediatrics, call 727-372-6760. And to get to know them better, listen to Dr. Mike and Dr. Carey on their Peds and Pop podcast on multiple platforms. Gator football is back, and the best way to get exclusive insight is a membership in the Gainesville Quarterback Club. As the oldest Gator booster club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you the access to speakers like coaches, Gator greats, and more. Yeah, I even talk over there. It's pretty cool. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of mem other members at weekly in-person meetings or for non-locals via Zoom with an out-of-town membership. Right now, out-of-town memberships are only $150, and all new out-of-town signups get entered to win two Champions Club tickets to a homecoming. That's pretty cool. Against Missouri, speaker presentations, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the quarter Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org or call me, Pat Dooley, 352-317-3444, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Gainesville Quarterback Club. Is your bank dropping the ball, not playing with heart or skill? Then you need to check out the scouting report on Campus USA Credit Union. That's a five-star recruit if I've ever seen one. Campus has it all, like great rates and products, friendly service, and smart game plans for you and your money. So why not put some star power in your financial life? Visit CampusCU.com or any campus service center today. Honey, can I recruit you to take the garbage out? All right, welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios and brought to you by Meldon Law. Here is Coach Steve Spurrier, as he is uh, usually on every mm -hmm. Monday. You've been busy. I know you've been mm -hmm. going to the Hall of Fame dinners and the Heisman dinners, and mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, College Football Hall of Fame's out in Vegas now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, went out there, saw a few people here and there, and uh, it was a, a nice event. Uh, the quarterback from Stanford uh, that played with Indianapolis. Uh, uh, Oliver Luck? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his son, Oliver's son. Uh, Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a speaker for the Hall of Fame inductees, did a super job uh, and so forth. But uh, yeah, it was a nice event. And then the Heisman up in New York City again that uh, went to Caleb Williams, Southern Cal quarterback. And yeah, other, you kind of went viral because everybody loved that you, you said something. I think everybody was waiting for the moment and you went, well, I had to say the winner of the yeah. 2022 uh, Heisman Trophy. I did mention that uh, some people think it is one of the most prestigious awards. Yeah, which we talked awards, about on the show. Individual yeah. award. Yeah. Uh, it's still not like a team award. People always ask me, is that the biggest thing you've ever won? I said, no, no, no. All those uh, conference championships and a national, because those are team team championships, uh, have got to be your biggest awards and honors that uh, you like to remember the rest of your life. So anyway, it was uh, a nice 
highest function there, and uh, Caleb Williams, he went a little, a little long on his acceptance speech. Yeah, I, he I went 18 watch. minutes, and we're standing up there going back and forth. But, uh, <laughs> and then the next night, we had the black tie uh, yeah. dinner. He only talked about three minutes. <laughs> and we're all sitting there. Like, now you can go 18. But anyway, yeah, he, he's a nice guy and a heck of a player. Oh, he's, he's going to be some. He'll play one more year. And then he'll go pro. Uh, but he was given uh, his schedule throughout the season. He gets up at 530 every morning. He's got his workout guy that comes in. And they do all kind of workout stretches and uh, this, that, and the other. And then they have their conditioning, treadmill, and you know, heart, uh, uh, cardiovascular workout. And, and then they practice that afternoon. I mean, he's got a steady schedule all the way through to be the very best he can be. And, and so many college kids are like that now. Right. And right. if you're not competing like they are, right. you know, back in our day in the 60s, nobody com- uh, trained like that. No, so no. we were all sort of even when we played. But if you've got a team that trains uh, excessively and knows how to do it, uh, they're going to have uh, an advantage on you. All you had was Gatorade. That was <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the other teams, they you know they looked like us. They weren't real big, strong, and fast either. So you know you had a chance against almost everybody you played. But uh, conditioning and, and workouts and eating correctly, all that is uh, very important nowadays. Certainly. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, one team that didn't play very well this weekend was yeah. Florida, and uh, it was not fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, we knew mm-hmm. that it was going to be a, a problem mm-hmm. with a quarterback who hadn't played all year, hadn't played, mm-hmm. hadn't taken a meaningful snap in his career. Mm-hmm. We knew it was going to be a bit yeah. of an issue, but I don't think we thought it would be as bad as it was. I did tell people this game can get away from Florida because they're fundamentally mm-hmm. really good team. Oh, they were very good. Uh, I enjoyed watching Oregon State play. Yeah. Uh, well coached, uh, their defensive schemes. Uh, we couldn't run the ball because they had a guy slanting <laughs> where we were running. Right. Uh, nobody was blocking him. And uh, I don't know if they knew our blocking schemes or what have you. Uh, but uh, they stymied our run game. And, of course, Miller had not played, what, four or five snaps, I guess, is what he's played all year. Uh, he, no, I don't think he, he's he played get, any. I, I, think, I thought the I think it was Angle uh, played four Eastern, or five. Eastern Washington game, didn't he get in? No, that field? was Angle. That was the other guy. Oh, it right? was? Yeah. Okay, well, maybe so, he had not played. Well, that, he had not played all year, and I think he only had four or five snaps at Ohio State okay. when he was there. So, yeah, and again, yeah. I'm, I'm not blaming mm-hmm. him. You know, it's mm-hmm. they, they definitely dumbed down the offense a little bit, you know, didn't really yeah. run. Yeah, we tried. And obviously, the receivers, uh, uh, a lot of guys hadn't played much, this, that, and that. But anyway, it reminded me somebody said it reminded them remember 1989 uh we'd already fired galen hall Florida that's exactly Heads, what uh, i they, thought about they qualified yeah. for that bowl game yeah, the freedom bowl freedom bowl out there and course, anaheim emmett took himself out in the second quarter yeah and he said what took we, his pads what off. are we doing here <laughs> and uh instead of opting out nobody opted out but he opted out in the second quarter which you can't hardly blame him. The game was out of hand. I think we got beat by Washington, what, 42 to 7? 34 7, something like that. 34 yeah. 7, something like that. So, uh, and the Gator fans, well, the team is in disarray. Uh, a new coach is coming in. And so I inherited that team that was loaded with players, but they were in disarray that day at yeah. the bowl game. And uh, once we got our act together and we got Jerry Odom, and we had all kind of leaders on that first right. 1990 team. Uh, so it was one of my most fun teams to coach here, the, the one the first year. And that was the same bunch of guys. So I don't care what people say about how much money we spend. If we've got 2,000 employees and we pay everybody all of a sudden. If you don't have attitude and want to within a team, right. uh, we're going to look like we looked the last game. So yeah. we, we've got to get to that. I know Billy Napier knows that and everybody knows that. And uh, it doesn't matter how much facilities you got or how much money you got. If you don't have attitude and guys loving the play and love each other and this, that, and the other, you'll get what we got last uh, at the bowl game. And that's what he's been trying to, to do. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, Steve mm-hmm. – the guy, you know, they've gotten rid of a bunch of guys, purged a bunch of guys, guys are leaving, guys are going to other schools. Uh, but they made so many mistakes, the guys that are coming back, you know, the guys that you, you would think would buy in. I mean, in the last three games, I think they've had 28 penalties. Like they were the, oh. le- they were the least penalized team, and all of a sudden they're, they're committing them one after another. Yeah, jumping offside and so forth. Uh, we had five or six of those in the game. And, uh, yeah, just careless things like that. Uh, 
Now that's, uh, you know, I always, people ask me, who do we blame uh, for what we did? And I said, I don't know. I always said the players and the coaches are in it together. Yeah. So if you look like, right. if you lose more than you win, uh, it's all of you. It's not just one or the others. So uh, anyway, uh, we got some time to regroup. We'll have, a, I guess, a whole new different team next year. Yeah, uh, pretty much. But, but uh, thinking you can go out and buy a team in college, A&M did not buy one this year. University of Miami didn't buy one. Uh, you still got to have players with the want to and the attitude to to want to win. So hopefully we can get that going real soon. What did you think about the field goal at the end of the game? I said kick it. That's what I said. I said too. kick it. Heck, we had nothing else to do except try to score and keep up our record of uh, you know not getting shut out. Yeah. Shoot, yeah, kick it. I don't care what those ABC boys said about. <laughs> oh, that's well, bull crap. Uh, that we had a chance. I, in fact, it reminded me, Pat, you were at this game. Uh, South Carolina played uh, Florida in the swamp. Yep, and. Uh, they ran a kickoff bag. We had a oh, – it went out – it got out of hand. It's must champs teams, so they didn't have a lot of offense, <laughs> but they right. had turnovers. <laughs> and uh, we were down uh, 44 to 8. We'd actually blocked an extra point. Yeah, you point turned it over a back. ton in that yeah, game. We, we, yeah, we had a bad game. It went bad from the beginning. We tried a kickoff, run up in here, throw you a lag away back, out there, yeah. and – Dropped it on the two yard line, so <laughs> so it was a bad day for South Carolina. So we got down there with about two minutes left, or a minute and a half or something, and we had fourth and seven or eight, and uh, I sent field goal team in, and somebody said, "Why did you kick a field goal at the end of the game?" And I said, because I've always wanted to score 11 points. <laughs> and that was my chance. <laughs> so that was your number. We yeah. had to be 44 to 11. <laughs> and I said, I, only, I think the only game of my life we scored 11 points. So I got one, and it was in the swamp. Well, so, it, yeah. here is my thing. I, I mean, I was aware at halftime yeah. that this was going to yeah. be an issue, that they may not score for the first yeah. time in 436 oh, the games. Yeah, they yeah. talked about it all the way through the fourth quarter but, almost. But yeah. okay, so when they get down there and it's, but they just got sacked, it's fourth and 30 or whatever. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, you're not going to get it. No. You can't block anymore. No. You can't protect. They're rushing, they're blitzing. You can't. So you might as well kick it and, and get keep off the, the record snide. going. Heck yeah, get off the snide. Yeah, that's, uh, we did the right thing there. I agree. And 100%. 30 to 7 is no better than 30 to 3. Yeah, no. no so. <laughs> it really is. No, all we needed was a few points on the board. It, even if it was a safety, it would have been good. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there was one of your teams that only scored three points, but that was – you scored it early. That was against Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, 45 to three. And uh, that whole second half went – there's only seven three at half. Yeah. They and, ran back uh, – Dale Carter ran back the kickoff. Yeah. Every, yeah. every time I see Kirk Kirkpatrick, he reminds me, he said, Coach, I dropped one pass – in my senior year, and as that corner route against Tennessee, right in the first half, we had chest tied up, and uh, he didn't make it. So we did kick a field goal, and it, it was only 7-3 at halftime. Yeah. And then it got out of hand. They ran a kickoff back. They got a pick and fumble, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, we were out of it in the fourth yeah. quarter completely. And that can happen. How did, how did you try to bounce back from bowl losses? I mean, I know you, nobody did it better mm -hmm. than after the uh, – Nebraska lost. You guys bounced back and won the national title, but I mean, it, it kind of stays with you for a while. But you got to kind of flush it, don't you? Oh, you have to. Yeah, you have to learn from your losses. I, I heard one of those uh, commentators say the other day: sometimes getting clobbered, you bounce back better than one of those heartbreaking losses. Mm -hmm. One of those it goes down the wire and something happens, a loose ball, and they kick a field goal and beat you by one point or something like that, or you miss a field goal. And, and really, uh, losses like that are easy to bounce back. And you realize, man, we can't play like that if we're going to win. So the guys correct all their mistakes and errors. They don't feel sorry for themselves. You say, hey, we got crap beat out of us. We got to get better. Or, or we're going to be in trouble. So it, to, to me, it's easier to bounce back from uh, devastating losses, right. uh, uh, big score losses, than, than close game losses. Yeah, and that was yeah. the biggest one, 62-24, Nebraska. Nebraska, well, that 45-3 was about the same, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah. I'm talking about a bowl, yeah. bowl loss, yeah. Well, we uh, uh, here's what's interesting about football, and it happens all the time. So we lose 45-3 to at Tennessee. Tennessee and Auburn had tied that year. So Tennessee had a tie, and, of course, they beat us. They thought they were going to win the 
SEC. Right. Alabama came in the next week, beat them nine to six. <laughs> they were still <laughs> celebrating beating us. Auburn comes to our place, and if they beat us, they would be number one in the nation because uh, all they had was a tie. Everybody had a loss right then, and we beat them forty-eight to seven. So you know, forty-five to three, forty-eight to seven. That's almost identical. And we were the three teams. They yep. had tied each other. Yep. So it's it's not like they're forty-two points better than us or forty or nothing like that. Games can't get it's away. It's what happens that night. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the the answer is to a game because like that game got away from Florida. It was they were, it was going fine. They faked that punt to start the third quarter after they got a three and out. Mm -hmm. They faked the punt, like and punt. from that point on, it went downhill. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I don't know. There, I mean, you, it's not, in basketball, you call a timeout when things are starting to get away from you. I don't mm -hmm. know what you can do in football. Yeah, sometimes you call timeout if the other team's got some momentum going yeah. and try to try to do something different. Do something different is the only thing you can do, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I know you want to talk about some of the NFL games. Yeah. I'm telling you that the NFL saved my weekend because after watching that Florida game, I wasn't in the greatest mood. But those oh, NFL yes. games were unbelievable all weekend, and uh, including the Jaguar game. Yeah, Jags really look like a good team uh, after being down, what, 27 to 10 or something like that, 14, 27, 14, and come back and, and beat the uh, Cowboys in overtime. And uh, they got to pick six to do it. Uh, but uh, big win for the Jags, and it was neat seeing the stadium packed. Yeah, and they well, were a lot of crazy. Cowboy fans were there. But, yeah, the Cowboys but they were fans going were crazy there. at the end. They the, were the going Jaguar crazy, fans, yeah. and probably the biggest win for the Jags since Tom Coughlin was coaching yep. uh, those teams that got in the playoffs every year with Fred Taylor and, and so forth. So it was a good win for the Jags, Trevor. Uh, Lawrence really is developing he's, into yeah, a, a he's, great player. He's pretty good. Oh, he, isn't he, he throws yeah. a beautiful pass. He's what six, 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 seven, and uh, man, he's always throwing downhill. You know those six yeah. foot, six one guys right. are throwing between arms, and, and it seems like he's he, he's got an advantage on them. So that was a big win. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. I want to uh, give a I shout watch out. That, yeah, Andy Reid, the coach of the Chiefs. I think he's the best coach up there. They have won seven uh, divisions in a row, seven Western divisions in a row. I like these guys that do it year in and year out, seven straight Western divisions. Uh, Bobby Stoops at Oklahoma, I think he won 10 conference championships in 18 years. Wow. I like those guys that are consistent winners. Now, how many in a row did you win in the East? Once the East went to 92, so 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. So that was five in a row. Yeah, we went, we lost in 97, 98, won in 99, 99 and, 2000. And, no, yeah. and 2000. So I think we won seven out of the ten uh, that's that's not, I was here. I think Florida fans would take that right now. Oh, <laughs> a division win would be a, a big, big win right now. But with Georgia uh, there, uh, it's going to be hard to beat those guys. Yep. They, they've got it going. And uh, – we got to get ball players, and we got to get attitude and effort and all kind of stuff to even compete with those guys. Yeah, and then there was the I watched. I loved the uh, mm -hmm. Bills. Um, I only saw the fourth mm -hmm. quarter, but the Bills Dolphins yeah. game in the snow when it started snowing in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. that was amazing. Obviously, on Saturday. The Vikings game, I actually turned the sound down on the Florida game because Florida was getting killed. That Vikings comeback was unbelievable. Down 33, yeah, biggest mm -hmm. in the history of the game. And uh, there was one other game. Oh, uh, the, the way... <laughs> The way the Raiders beat the uh, Patriots. Unbelievable. I mean, and, and apparently it was all impromptu, all improvised mm -hmm. that they were throwing the ball back. No, mm -hmm. you have to understand the concept of where you are in the game. If they recover it and run it back, you're going to lose the game. Now, meanwhile, I threw it right to them. Yeah, the uh, the first guy saw his buddy behind him, so he gave him a lateral. Yeah. For, I don't know. And it just kind of triggered everything. And the other yeah. guy said, well, maybe we're supposed to toss this thing around. <laughs> so he looked back and fired one, and uh, it w wasn't a lineman. Who was it he picked it off? Was it a linebacker type? Uh, it was a linebacker, type, yeah. linebacker type yeah. guy? Yeah. And we learned that uh, Mac Jones is not much of a tackler, is he? No, he? he's Oh, not. man. That was the most beautiful stiff arm. Hey. Uh, that you'll ever see probably. He stiff-armed him right in the ground and, and took off running. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen an ending like that. No, especially with a, a, a team like New England. You wouldn't expect that to happen. No, he would no. just, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they ran a running play basically to run out the clock and go to overtime. That was their plan. And he broke it. And, and he got through, but he wasn't, wasn't going to go all the way. And 
just crazy. Yeah, was, that was a, a funny ending, that's for sure. And uh, but uh, yeah, the games uh, so many go into overtime up there or go down the last uh, play or two, and that's what people love to watch on television. They, yeah. they don't love the forty-two to ten game things like that. So uh, the NFL knows what they're doing as far as creating uh, pretty much even teams, and uh, which college uh, is the opposite. Well, it used to be the opposite completely with the yeah. Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, Ohio State, Southern Cal. Looks like Southern Cal is getting back in there. Uh, but other teams are having a little bit more of a chance now. I, I think I read where the Final Four this year is not Alabama. It wasn't Ohio State, but now they're in it. It wasn't Clemson. It wasn't Oklahoma. Yeah. And they've been in just about all Pretty much, them. yeah. So we're getting some different teams in there. And uh, the opportunity, at some point, they got to – put a limit or a ceiling on all this NIL money. Uh, I think the guys are wasting their money when they give millions to these kids to come play. Uh, I think they it destroys team spirit a little bit, and uh, I, I don't think it's good for the entire team. But, but time will tell to see how they work this thing out. You know, I heard somebody talk about this today, and I, I agree with them. I think, again, the water is going to level out, and it's eventually going to get to a point where guys are going, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I gave you $3 million, uh, and you went seven and six or whatever, you know, and they're going to – I think it's going to – Recede, yeah. you know, and I—I I mean, I don't know. Though we're also dealing with uh, labor relations board suing the state of Los Angeles to make sure the players are treated as employees. And I'm like, okay, if they're treated as employees, Steve, mm -hmm. shouldn't they have to pay for their own way to school? Because they're employees, then, right? Which you would have to if you. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know where this is all going to end up. I—I I, I just want kind of want to get to mm -hmm. the end of it, but who knows? Yeah, who knows where it will end up. Uh, it's not like pro ball because there's no ceiling. Yeah. Pro ball, they have a limit on what your bonus is, you right. know, depending on where you're drafted and all that. And, and then they have a salary cap supposedly where you, you know, you have a certain a number that you can do it. Uh, but a lot of those teams where quarterbacks are making 45 to 50 million but are not doing very well. Uh, Russell Wilson at Denver, Kyler Murray at Arizona, of course he got hurt. And, uh, Deshaun Watson at Cleveland, I don't know if he'll ever earn that $230 million or what have you. Uh, but anyway, I, I don't know. I just uh, One thing I always admired about Tom Brady is that he said, just keep mine at 25. And he, he could be easily making 50, like Mahomes and Rodgers at right. Green Bay and all that. But I think he's always just said, leave mine there and give it to the rest of the guys on the team. And I think that's why his teams have had such really good team spirit. It is amazing mm -hmm. to look at the quarterbacks mm -hmm. around this, and especially the backups, that mm -hmm. most of them aren't very good. And and it's just – you would think there'd be more great quarterbacks mm -hmm. in, in the NFL. I mean, you got 32 teams. You would think there would be 64 quarterbacks. I always mm -hmm. think, I always think, man, if, if Coach Spurrier was still playing, if he was in his prime, he'd be starting for somebody because there aren't, there aren't a lot of good ones out there. It's oh. really surprising. Oh, I never was that much of a pro player, but uh, uh, I tell. But the one year that you played, you you did really yeah, well. Yeah, we did okay. Uh, but I was fortunate to be a backup quarterback, and that's that's why I got ten years in the league. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. When the pension checks roll around, <laughs> that's the only thing that. Uh, and, when do you start and, collecting and on a, that? When in fact, you... I told Kyle Trask you know, right before uh, he left here, get drafted by a team that's got a starter. That would right. be good. Be a backup for oh, four or five years, and then hopefully get a chance to play four or five, and uh, you can have a nice long career. And he's he's uh, back up down there what in his third year this year, I think. Yeah, I think three is so, the beginning of your pension right now. Uh, now. Either three or four, maybe yeah. three now. I'm not sure, but anyway, I know he's looking forward to trying to play somewhere pretty soon though. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right. We appreciate Coach Spur as always every Monday here on another Duly Noted podcast. We'll come back. He is, of course, sponsored by our good friends at Meldon Law, mm -hmm. and we appreciate them. But first, we have to get to our Campus USA play of the game. And there weren't too many of them, mm -hmm. Coach. We, we could mm -hmm. only come up with one that was even uh, a play where I kind of got, I don't know, excited is not really the word, uh, but at least it was like, I was happy it happened, mm -hmm. okay? And here it was. It's the only point Florida yeah, scored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, of course, Mihalik missing that early field goal wasn't good. Again, he's from 50 yards or more, he's got the leg, but he tends to not be accurate. You know, he tends to miss a lot of them. But so I'm thinking this one, oh it's my God. Yeah, it's exact 40 yarder, ball yep. on the 30. Which is how long your kick was, was against Auburn. Yet 40. Yeah, we got two 40-yard uh, field goals that go down in infamy here. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, history here. That's right. Two 40-yard field are, goals. Those are the two 40-yard <laughs> field goals we'll yep. always remember. There we go. Uh, but that's yeah. great. Uh, thanks, Coach, for being here. Right. As always, we'll be back with more on another Duly Noted podcast presented by mm-hmm. Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another Duly Noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer Co. to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we before it was a call-ahead carryout, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities just look at gas streaming services and heck even chicken wings well there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life and the fine folks at titan mri agree with costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital you'll not only save money you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience so when you need an mri call titan first and you can go where your doctors send their families now offering cat scans Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. Pat Dooley Storytime is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. Nobody knows how to provide pediatric health care for little gators better than Dr. Mike and the other board-certified pediatricians and the pediatric nurse practitioners of East Lake Pediatrics. They have been providing personalized health care to the children of Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties since 2004. And with the recent addition of Dr. Chris, who is also board certified in sports medicine, they are now offering care for youth sports injuries as well. To learn more about East Lake Pediatrics, call 727-372-6760. And to get to know them better, listen to Dr. Mike and Dr. Carey on their Peds and Pop podcast on multiple platforms. Gator football is back, and the best way to get exclusive insight is a membership in the Gainesville Quarterback Club. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you the access to speakers like coaches, Gator greats, and more. Yeah, I even talk over there. It's pretty cool. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of mem- other members at weekly in-person meetings or for non-locals via Zoom with an out-of-town membership. Right now, out-of-town memberships are only $150 and all new out-of-town signups get entered to win two Champions Club tickets to a homecoming. That's pretty cool. Against Missouri, speaker presentations, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the quarter- Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org or call me, Pat Dooley, 352-317-3444, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Gainesville Quarterback Club. Is your bank dropping the ball, not playing with heart or skill? 
then you need to check out the scouting report on Campus USA Credit Union. That's a five-star recruit if I've ever seen one. Campus has it all, like great rates and products, friendly service, and smart game plans for you and your money. So why not put some star power in your financial life? Visit CampusCU.com or any Campus Service Center today. Honey, can I recruit you to take the garbage out? Okay, and welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Log Gator Studios. And right now we go to our Big Mills cheesesteak Zoom line to talk to the great Robbie Andrew. Uh, and I know, Robbie, that you probably, like I did, turned the game over to the Vikings game at some point. I did, Pat. You know, in the first <laughs> half, I'm a big Vikings fan. I was thinking, God, this game's over. The fans were booing. They had a blocked punt for a touchdown. Yeah. It was a total mess. Like they were totally out of sync. And I said, well, I don't need to worry about that. I'll watch the Gator game. Then, you know, I started look, going back to the Vikings game. It was unbelievable what, what they did. Yeah, it was See, incredible. I missed, I missed much of the Florida game. You, you didn't miss much. Well, you missed no. a bunch of three and outs. And, again, I mean, look, I, I'm, I'm one of those guys that, that you can't judge – this coach by this season, but there are some things I can judge and some of it is play calling. Some of it is clock management. For example, maybe you don't agree with me on this with two minutes left in the first half, they call timeout to get the ball back. And I'm like, no, you don't do that. You're not because gonna yeah. You're not going to do anything with the ball anyway. So just get yeah. out of here. And they ended up letting them drive down. Of course, they blocked the field goal. And at that point, you're thinking, well, maybe they got some momentum. And then, of course, a fake punt. Special teams, again, had one good play, so they had to have four bad ones to counter it. Yeah. But I agree with you on the play calling, too. Every fourth or third and short, it's a run up the middle. There's no imagination to it. There's no, you know, the, the offensive play calling is just very bland to me. And there's no nothing real exciting about the way they call plays or how they run their offense right now. No, and, and again, we saw the offense a little bit exposed in that if uh, okay, without Osiris Torrance, you had Cameron Waits, who's a third-team right guard, and he got he got whiffed on. I mean, he whiffed on yeah, a bunch got, of block, uh, including yeah. the one on Montreal Johnson on that fourth down play. Um, but it, also, if your quarterback's not going to keep it around the end, that that series of plays isn't going to work. I, I, I no. just it was it was driving me nuts. Yeah, when there's no threat for the quarterback run, I mean, that just shows you where AR was so good and so important to the offense that he gave that element of a huge play maker on the outside, keeping the ball. Yep. Now absolutely. they don't have that. And now they're six and seven again. Yeah. I thought they'd come out and try to throw the ball, but they, you know, that didn't work. They kept running the same old offense. Well, second play of the game, they throw it and it's open. Caleb Douglas drops it. Boom. Yeah. I mean, they just couldn't do anything right. Yeah. I'm but just Pat, glad. You know, I I'm glad the season's over. Yeah, and on the on the radio last week, though, we kind of predicted that the game was kind of going to go yeah. like that. They were going to easily Oregon State would easily cover the spread. We both agreed on that. Yeah, I mean, and the spread actually went down to seven and a half. A lot of late Gator money came in on that. Dummy um, money. Yeah, losers. <laughs> well, I'm sure that was mostly wise guys' money. They said well, this spread seems yeah. too high. Let's get it down. But anyway, let it's time for us to play Yes, Nowhere, Maybe, brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak, street dining, street dining done the right way. And, of course, you go in there and you can get free fries if you mention another duly noted podcast with your order. Uh, number one, Robbie, there's been a lot of rumors about this and a lot of rumbling in the last couple of weeks. Oklahoma and Texas are in the SEC in 2024, a year early. Maybe, Pat. I mean, I, there was always talk when they first came in, they tried to get him in earlier than they thought. So I, I would say, yeah, a solid maybe on that. That definitely could happen. I, I think there's a lot of people in the Big 12. Again, they're bringing in those other teams a year before they get yeah. rid of them. And they're like, let's just, let's just have it. We, we want them out. We don't want a chance of them playing in our championship game. So, and it almost happened with Texas this year. Oh, so yeah. let's, let's get rid of them. Let's let them go to that conference and get their butts kicked. Yeah, uh, Pat, they're, ready to move, they're ready to move on without those two teams. So, yeah. you know, definitely could happen in 2024. 
Yeah, I have a feeling it will happen. Uh, number two on yes, no way, or maybe. Robbie, yes, no way, or maybe. Florida's last two seasons have ruined college football for you. Uh, no. No, not <laughs> at all, Pat. I mean, <laughs> I could have said maybe, but I, no, it didn't have ruined college football season for me. It's just, you know, they, they've gone through a tough spell here, but they'll, they'll pull out of it. You know how it goes in cycles. I mean, he needs to hang on to the recruiting year, hit the portal, get something positive going, and then they'll be back. They'll be a lot better, I think, next season. But, you know, we'll see. But it hasn't ruined the season for me, no. Yeah, I I think I told my wife, I said, football is unruinable for me. There's no way yeah. I'm ever going to stop watching. In fact, Sunday really helped me. Sunday's games oh, yeah. were unbelievable. They were. Um, and then that was a lot of fun. And I go, this is why I love the sport. Florida yeah. will be back. They'll be yeah. back some point. Hopefully. Yeah, and Pat, even, even when Florida's not good, you still love college football, all the other games. So it doesn't yeah. really matter if they're good or bad. College football, you're going to love it. Yeah, maybe not this week. This week's not so good for uh, games, but yeah. there are plenty of them. Uh, just none of them that are significant. Number three on Yes, Nowhere, maybe. Robbie, the Vikings win the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm going to say no way, even after that game the other day, just because, you know, the quarterback, he you never know what you're going to get with him. That first half, he was awful. He was great in yeah. the second. How but, do you get down yeah. by that? That would be – that's the, the red flag. Yeah, and a team that lost some to Dallas by 40-something. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, they've got a lot of deficiencies, and one of them is the defense isn't very good at all. So, I, you know, I don't think there's any way they're going to win the Super Bowl, but, you know, they've won the division. Maybe they'll win a playoff game, and I'd be happy with that. Well, you get your Twins hat on. We need to get you a Vikings hat. Yeah, I do. Bar <laughs> and then Blow they the play horn. that on third down they play that song from the arrival that uh where the <laughs> remember oh yeah the, yeah the, what do they call the rock net pods or whatever they were yeah <laughs> yeah they had that song that music that's what they play from it i always freak out when i hear it all right robbie appreciate you being on yes nowhere hey, maybe bye. as always good to see you again all right robbie andrew Appreciate his time as always. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to all of our other great stuff here on another duly noted podcast as always presented by the great folks at Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studio. It's been a fun day so far. Coach Spurrier was great. We enjoyed the uh, Campus USA play of the game. Uh, and, of course, Robbie doing Yes, Nowhere, maybe brought to you by Big Mills. Let's get to the Adams Ribco to go Gators of the week. And, and for me, I mean, I, you could have gone with somebody in women's basketball. You could have gone with nobody in football. <laughs> um, but to me, and I saw this video and it made me tear up a little bit. The students uh, at Florida that did the flash mob for Kent Fox, Kent Fox final graduation commencement speech. Um, it was very good. They actually recited the Irish prayer that he always recites. Uh, some of the students did, uh, but this, the, when you, if you get a chance, go on Google and find this flash mob. They did this John Mayer song that was just unbelievable. It was so good. It made me tear up. Maybe it won't make you tear up, but it made me tear up. And they are our Gators of the week. Cause that's being a Gator right there. Telling your president, you love him. I'm going to miss Kent Fox a lot. I, I got along with him so well. Um, Probably better than any president's been at Florida. Oh, me and Bernie got along. Me and Lombardi got along okay. I did not know Jane Wayne writes. Sorry. I don't go back that far. Uh, so that's our Adams Rib Co. to go. Gators of the week. Boy, they're going to be busy this weekend. We know that. Uh, let's get to our Leonardo's and Millhopper quick picks. And guys, uh, I'm going to go back and over and look it over again. But I don't think anybody got it right. You had to get both right. You had to get the the uh, spread right. And I gave you the 10, even though it went down to 7.5. And, and you had to get the over-under. And most people went over, and it was obviously way under at 53. Ended up being 33 points scored. So I don't think anybody got it right. But I will look over. I kept everybody's. And I'll, I'll look it over one more time and, and make sure it's uh, correct. Let's give you one game. And it is the Gasparilla Bowl this week. Wake Forest minus one against Missouri. And the Gasparilla Bowl, you guys know the Gasparilla Bowl because Florida was in it last year. 
Um, and I think a lot of us will watch it curious whether Sam Hartman could be the guy. I keep hearing Michael Pratt again from uh, Tulane. Who knows who the quarterback's going to be? But it's uh, at least one of the one game I think we're worth watching this weekend. Uh, it's not a great weekend for college football uh, for the Bulls. Uh, but hey, look. Again, nobody makes you watch it. Nobody. Nobody's going to make you watch it. That is our Leonardo's and Millhopper quick picks for another day. And we will pull one. I tell you what we'll do. We'll pull one on the – because we're not going to do a show on the 26th. So 26, 27, 28, 28, 30th. We're going to pull one on the 30th. That will be a late Christmas present for somebody to win $25 of Leonardo's plus some other – Great stuff. Uh, let us get to our Hesser and Kipke. Three things, of course, three things, as always, is brought to you by Hesser and Kipke, as was Robbie Andrew, by the way. I forgot to mention that when he was on. He is brought to you as well by Hesser and Kipke. Uh, Hesser and Kipke is a law firm based in Hale Plantation, specializing in, in uh, employment, workers' comp, and family law. They do a great job over there. Visit their website at www.hklawfl.com. Or call Ken and Jennifer at 352-339-9920. Ken and Jennifer, they're a great couple. And we love uh, love them being a part of this uh, sponsorship. Again, they sponsor Robbie Andrews' segment. I want to make sure I, I, I include that. All right, number one on Hester and Kipke's three things. Men's basketball has kind of been quiet. You know, we just don't talk about them a whole lot lately and they're playing another game this week and they haven't played in a week and then they take another week off. But anyway, they're playing against Oklahoma up at that, um, uh, jump man classic where the women are also playing on Tuesday. The men play Wednesday. Um, uh, Florida is 53rd right now in, in net ranking Oklahoma 56. So it could turn into whoever wins that game. It could turn into a quad one. If you're top 50, you're a quad one. So it could turn into one. So it is kind of an important game. I, it's a big game for Florida, even though it's a nine 30 game. Um, Florida's zero and four in quad one games right now. Oklahoma's zero and two. So the, both of them really need a win. This is an important game. This is actually a big game on this season going forward. Um, so make sure you watch it Wednesday at 930. Um, number two, uh, let let me know when you've got all these uh, transfer portal things and everything locked up because it's getting monotonous to go on Twitter, uh, which is monotonous in itself. And constantly see guys whenever they're going and this guy's going here and this guy's, I don't care. I really don't care. Like all these guys that left Florida, where they go, it'll be interesting story when the season starts. Not now. I don't care. The funny thing is most of them ended up at power five schools. So they, they're clearly talented players who just haven't done a lot and weren't, didn't have the right attitude for Billy Napier. Doesn't mean Billy Napier's right, too, by the way. He may be wrong. Maybe the, there's a better way to coach. I and Again, I'm not trying to be negative on him, but maybe his way isn't the right way. We'll see. We're about to find out. We'll find out over the next two years. And anybody who thinks Billy Napier is going to get fired is just an idiot or a giddy. Um, number, number three on Hester and Kipke, three things. Uh they did decide the World Cup. Apparently, it was an unbelievable game or match or whatever they call it. It was 3 3. It went to uh, penalty shots. And uh, of course, all the pro soccer people jump on Twitter immediately and go, Hey, yeah, so much for you anti soccer people. Well, I didn't watch the game, so I guess that makes me anti soccer. I, I just didn't care. I didn't care who won. I really didn't. I just didn't. I was rooting. I I told my wife, I think I'm rooting against Argentina because they harbored a lot of Nazis. <laughs> if that's a reason I'm watching a soccer match, that's not a good one. Um, but it's over. The You won't hear about soccer again for another four years. Uh, again, I'm not a soccer. I'm not anti-soccer. I like soccer. I like to watch it. I like to watch it when I care. I watch the USA games. I'm not a big fan of Qatar. Okay. That's the A part of it. And the B part of it is um, I've got to really care, really passionately care about who's going to win the game. For example, I covered the Fort Lauderdale Strikers and the the uh, Jaxel team. In. 
both in the in ASL. So I cared, you know, because I had to write about it. So, but anyway, soccer's over for another year. Uh, let us get to our Games of the Week, sponsored by the Gainesville Quarterback Club. And, of course, as I mentioned, and, that, and this is the last one that they'll be sponsoring, it is open for you to do the Games of the Week or anything else. We need one more segment to uh, add in here. If you want to do anything else that has to do with basketball, maybe you're into basketball, maybe you're into women's basketball, maybe you're into uh, softball and baseball. If you want to be a sponsor, it's very cheap. I, I can get, cut you a good deal. Call me, and we will talk about something you want to do. Maybe it's a baseball player of the week or some, or maybe it's anything, anything you want to do. I'm very open for those kind of things. And the great thing is when I've said that, almost always somebody has called and become a sponsor. So that's why we're so loaded up with great sponsors. Uh, let's go to basketball. We talked about basketball 930 on Tuesday. Yikes. 930 on Wednesday. Men, women on Tuesday against Oklahoma. Men on Wednesday against Oklahoma from Charlotte. Those are going to be late games. Uh, the Monday night game tonight is Rams at Green Bay. Not doing a lot for me there. I guess I'll watch a little bit of it. Uh, seven bowl games before we get to Saturday. Not many of them are really good, but again, will they be on the second TV at worst? Yes, they'll be up there. And I'll be watching a movie on one TV and I go, oh, well, that game's 34-33. I got to turn it on. So I'll watch I'll watch the games. But there's seven bowl games. Um, you also have a Thursday night game, Jacksonville at New York Jets, which all of a sudden seems like a big game at 815. That's on Prime Video. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Is any of it compelling during the week? Not really, but it's still stuff to watch, as we know. And there'll be a lot of college basketball on as well. Finally, let us get to Pat Dooley's story time. Pat Dooley's story time is always brought to you by East Lake Pediatric. We appreciate them so much and uh, big sponsors of the Bob Dooley Invitational, which I am really going to get to work on as soon as we get through the first of the year. I've already been talking to a lot of people. A lot of good things are already coming in. It's going to be great. Trust me. Um, I was thinking about how many bowls I've been to, and I my count is 42. I think I'm right on that. I think I've been to 42 bowl games, which is amazing in, that in my life I've been able to go to 42 bowl games. Now, again, Florida has a lot to do with that, but I went to some other games. Um, but I, I was trying to think which which bowl games have I gone to, and I'm probably missing one here. I've been to the Gator, obviously, the Sugar, the Rose, the Fiesta, Peach, Cotton, Birmingham, <laughs> Orange, many times, Citrus, Outback and Tangerine. In fact, I just thought of another Orange Bowl game I went to that I didn't list, so I think it's 43. The most memorable, though, of all time will be the Ohio State Clemson Gator Bowl in 78 when Woody Hayes punched Charlie Bowman from uh, uh, Clemson who had intercepted a pass and the game was over. And I was on the other sideline. I was on the Clemson sideline. I think I've told this story before, but I was on the other, the Clemson sideline. He came running off right at me, and he looked right at me because we had talked during the week, and he goes, the old man punched me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me write that down. We had the only quote from Charlie Bowman after that game, the only one, it was in the Florida Times Union. I was just standing there, and he said it, and I was right, I wrote it down. Uh, but it's been, it's been a great run of going to bowls. I don't know if I'm ever going to see another one. We talked about the Vegas Bowl. It just didn't make sense. To me, it was like, if you want to go to Vegas, let's plan a trip to Vegas. Don't just go because Gators, without their quarterback, without their second-in quarterback, without their middle linebacker, without their best receiver, or second-best receiver, you could make an argument there, uh, are going to play a team that's really good, which I knew Oregon State. I knew Oregon State was going to be a bad news. Anyway, that is our Pat Dooley story time. Appreciate everybody for watching. Appreciate my great producer, Tammy, for doing such a great job. Or maybe Tammy Lynn would be a good name. That was the name of the wife and uh, Ted, Tammy Lynn. Because remember, he made her do all the, made him do all the uh, possible nicknames, white trash nicknames. What is, is what? Tammy. Well, it is Tammy Wynn. Yeah. What's your middle name? I don't have one. Oh, 
So she's a snooty. She doesn't want to bother with that middle name. My middle daughter's middle name is Lennon after John Lennon. See, tribute. I'll I'll give you a middle name next week. How about that? We're going to give Tammy a middle name next week. <laughs> Until then, we will be back Friday. Alyssa Lang is going to join us, and we can't wait for her to do that. And we'll be back with another Duly Noted podcast. Until then, I am Pat Dooley. I'm deep. I'm way back, and I am out of here.